military mistakes, public surveillance, national security. Can you keep a secret? Welcome to Click, I'm Spencer Kelly. Over the last couple of years, we've spent a lot of time talking about one person. Now, this person is one of the most controversial figures in the world, and he helped facilitate one of the biggest security leaks in history. We've never had the chance to talk to him directly or ask him any questions. That is, until now. And that's because this week I've been able to chat over satellite to Julian Assange, founder of the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. Assange, of course, has been based in the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012, following a British court ruling that he should be extradited to Sweden to face questioning over allegations of sexual assault. A former hacker, it was in April 2010 when Assange and WikiLeaks gained global notoriety, releasing footage showing US soldiers shooting dead 18 civilians from a helicopter in Iraq. Millions of other classified documents followed. For his supporters, Assange is an advocate of free speech and an open society, shining a light on the murky activities of governments all around the world. To his detractors, he is a harmful and unpredictable figure, endangering countless lives by exposing sensitive and classified information to the public. Whatever you think of him, his influence on the world of tech is undeniable, inspiring people like Edward Snowden and, for good or bad, changing the very way we view and treat information. Julian, thanks for joining me. You've been in the embassy for nearly two years now. Can I just ask, what, what is life like for you at the moment? What's your state of mind? It's a difficult environment. Others are in a more difficult environment. There is $8 million uh, of admitted um, surveillance of the embassy in the last 18 months. Snowden documents re reveal that the GCHQ uh, has also been spying on our operations in 2012 uh, and the National Security Agency since 2010. Edward Snowden has re revealed then that a lot of our communications, in fact probably most of them, are, are being snooped, are being tapped, are being collected. The people, if you like, that are in the middle are the people who host all that data and run the infrastructure. Do you think that they're at risk? The Edward Snowden revelations demonstrate conclusively uh, something that has been known by word of mouth within the internet services industry for a long time, that the NSA, GCHQ uh, and allied agencies in countries like Sweden uh, have been in the business of targeting um, employees of major hosting companies, um, the system administrators uh, and so on for uh, computer hacking. It's been suggested that different countries or different continents now set up their own internet. Angela Merkel recently suggested an internet for Europe. Do you think that's really workable and do you think we'd be any better off than, than your opinion of the internet at the moment? I think the impulse to do it is quite important and will lead to good things and should be supported. The devil is in the detail in terms of how these communication links actually operate. Uh, when you talk about internet for Europe, well, Europe is like a, one of these telecommunications companies. Europe is thoroughly penetrated and thoroughly comprom compromised and engages in dirty deals uh, with the uh, United States government, uh, especially uh, the UK and Sweden. Who should be in charge of deciding what does stay secret for very good reasons and what gets published? Because we can't publish everything, surely. WikiLeaks has a seven-year publishing history uh, and we've never got it wrong. We've never published uh, material in a form which has led to the physical harm of even a single person. Uh, the US government admits that. Uh, any claim otherwise is simply uh, spin. Are you really asking the world to trust you? For any organisation to be accountable, the buck has to stop with someone. Uh, uh, and in publishing organisations, the buck stops with the publisher uh, or the editor. 
But I wonder if you think it's ever possible to have completely private data in 2014 or whether that's maybe a fantasy. The question is whether a state intelligence alliance, principally the UK and the US, Five Eyes Alliance, can spy upon nearly the entire world at once, on a constant basis, nearly every person, map out the entire community structure of every nation, who influences who, who is connected to who. It's not about making sure that a single person cannot be spied upon, or the communications between two people is always private. Uh, the, the real battle is to make sure that it is hard to intercept everyone at once. Okay, Julian Assange, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Julian Assange. He is a controversial figure. You may feel strongly about some of the things he said. If you do, then please give us your thoughts. Email click at bbc.co.uk or tweet us at bbcclick. And if, like him, you're concerned about the level of surveillance and the threats that that brings with it, this will not be good news. Because, yes, this is a small drone, but it has one minor modification from most other drones. It just so happens to be fitted with a taser. Or to be more accurate, a stun gun capable of delivering 80,000 volts of electricity via a wired dart. The hybrid is the brainchild of Texas design firm Chaotic Moon, who tried out the prototype for click on this very capable dummy. The rather crazy invention is called the Chaotic Unmanned Personal Intercept Drone, or Cupid, to give it its more delicate and romantic sounding title. So, why does the world need a taser drone? The reason we did it is because this is the same thing that you see in several of the video games these days. You see it in several sci-fi movies. And so what we wanted to do was take this future concept, make it real, show that it could be built and show that it could work to raise up the question of technology and humanity and start an open discussion. And what do you do if you've already tased every actual dummy in the office? Well, you get the office intern to <coughs> volunteer. Witness Jackson Sheehan quite literally taking one for the team. We should point out that Jackson was unhurt after being struck by Cupid's taser. And needless to say, kids and adults, please don't try this at home.